Hello everyone, this is Fantastic Worlds, welcome you back to Lovecraft Country, and let's play Scarlet Episode. Uh, let's... Hello everyone, this is Fantastic Worlds, welcome you back to Lovecraft Country, and let's play Scarlet Hollow, Episode 1. Yes, this is supposed to be Episode 2, but apparently Steam has completely lost my, um... Save file, so we're starting from the beginning, and hopefully we're not going to keep starting from the beginning. So, as a result, so we're going to be beginning all over again. Now, I'm going to probably pick the first, I mean, the, well, actually, since we have audience participation right now, you guys get to pick the two perks I work with. Now, I really like being able to talk to animals. I'm uh, kind of hoping that you guys will agree with me there, but let's begin. We're going to do Fantastic Worlds again. in the city of Lovecraft Country. Yeah. <sighs> Not to my gravelly voice, there's no other options. Come on, there we go. <sighs> okay, Mouse, I see that we're going to have the problems here. Oh, there we go, that does it. All right, so if you're out there, which two do you want me to start this particular run with? Powerful build, mystical, talks to animals, street smart, keen eye, book smart, or hot, which I assume is physical attractiveness. Okay. <sighs> Um, talk to animals, gift and curse, see threads of reality, tough as nails, observant, pick some vibes, understand others' perspectives, well-read and rational, possesses a wealth of esoteric knowledge and knows when to use it, a talent researcher. Okay. Attractive and charming, natural flirt. Okay, let's just be weird. Let's go with that and... Talk to animals? <laughs> okay, so yeah, so you have talked to animals. Do you want me to stick with hot, or do you want me to go back to mystical? Because mystical was fun, but it wasn't actually adding a lot to the st to the story. Or do you want one of the others? Buffalo build mystic street smart. Remember, elder tours are happiest if they're dead to die. A fresh protagonist. Well, what's what? Considering all the times I get my characters killed. Alright, so, with no further ado, we're going with Hot and Tox the Animals. You jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing the bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come into focus. The long-lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides and the countless late-night stops and seedy depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You normally wouldn't find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. Yeah, could just... Plane ride? The funeral of Pearl Ann Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of the long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So anyways, as I was saying... Yeah, it's him again. Oh, God. Just... You can smell the douche from there. Douche... Douche bro. There we go. Oh, no. He's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking to you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first, he thought he was just being friendly, but he had several hours of one-sided conversation ago. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Alright, wait, what, dude, what's wrong with you? Hell yeah, sounds awesome, remain silent. Preferences? I'm gonna give, since I don't think we're on delay here, I'm gonna give 30 seconds for replying. So we shouldn't be on delay. According to the settings, we're on delay. Let's see, stream settings, analysis, there we go. Yeah, do, 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 do. yeah looks like we had normal going, oh, neither slow nor delay. All right, so that being said, 30 seconds have gone by, and 
remained silent. You do your best to keep a blank face. Waking up and by extension excellent giving this strange man permission to keep talking to you was a mistake. So this girl comes up that was swinging her purse telling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and she said it hurt a lot so I guess she was mad and not just playing. But she kept swinging and soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out and her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. Eh, she kind of became my girlfriend after that. We've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me, like, for real, and geez, you ever get mad you just want to, like, kill someone? Alright, so we're going with hot. Honestly, I can't say everyone's anyone's ever tried to break up with me. Threaten. Kind of like killing somebody right now. I never feel that way. Oh yeah, what's wrong with you? Smile and pretend he just didn't say that. So, silent stare. Was that for the previous one or this one? Because I don't think we have that option. We can only smile. <laughs> Just waiting. Like I said, I've got a timer down here, so I actually know how long it takes. <laughs> I don't think we can actually kill some him, but we can threaten him, so we'll go with that. I kind of feel like killing someone right now. I don't like horrible people waking me up to tell me of their horrible thoughts. What can I say? I'm an interesting guy. Anyways, you'll get it when someone tries to break your heart where it changes a man, person, makes him think things that were never thought they would, could. I also could have killed that woman. Anyway, she's giving birth to her son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be for there. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus in New York or something like that. I've always wanted to go there. Okay, what's wrong with you? How oh, it's interesting. Smart move. Get out where you can. Remain silent. Hmm... So, yeah, I'm going to wonder if there's a latency issue here with the replies. But I'm going giving you guys a few seconds. Because I already know what I want to do. We're going back to the silent stare. You sit awash in horror, but doing your best to keep a neutral face as this man admits he's thought about murdering the soon-to-be mother of his child. A child whose birth he's currently missing, considering ditching to go have fun in New York. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? I didn't. Scarlet Hollow, just a small town. Don't answer. I will default to silence if I don't get a reply. What's wrong with you? You got it. Oh, wait. So there's definitely a latency issue here. So I got what's wrong with you for the previous one. Okay, so, we're gonna go with don't answer. You don't say a word. The last thing you need right now is for you to know where you're going to be staying for the next week. Hmm, if you aren't getting off of my stop, you must be heading to Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the Hauler, as they call it in this part. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around. I ride it pretty often, so I'd know. Almost nobody ever goes up that way. They don't like strangers there. Though, actually, I had a couple of buddies from up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the Hauler, you see. And there's always a job listener to in the boards around here. I never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks, but my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while now I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing. Uh, up there. Hope they didn't die! Hmm. Looks back at his phone, for once focused on something other than you. Uh, I'm sorry, Jack. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you didn't get too bored without me to talk to. Here, I have something for you. Stranger Rifle is packed before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figure you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Tip, sometimes taking a dialogue option establishes new facts about who you are. All right, do we take the peanuts or not? Or we say, screw you and screw your peanuts? Or are we allergic? 
Do 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 do. Hmm. Ugh, I can see the drop frames issue here. Wow. Oh my god, I can hear the dripping. Just. I wonder if they can use the same effect for blood. That would be interesting, actually. Okay, so this time around, rather than having the penis to offer everyone, we're probably going to go with screw you and take everything. You got it. You take the peanuts. Ooh, sorry. Uh, I know. Unfortunately, Jack got a hair there for you. Take your peanuts. Thanks. Oh, that's me. You're welcome. That's his voice. Let's get it right, okay? And with that, I leave you. Safe friends. Tra safe travels, friend. Something tells me the smell in this bus just got a lot better. And just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow, end of the line. Almost there. Alright, we're back here. I'm gonna mess with our cousin this time. The bus finally comes to a stop, its brakes squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. The sign at least reads, bus station, but calling that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. I gave better pronunciation. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as so much as a road, much less let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the door behind you and you start the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Alright, so before we get involved with her, we're gonna do a uh we're gonna save. Alright. Hey, fantastic world. You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few That's true. Uh, public photos on her Facebook. This is your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. All right. Hot. Make a good first impression with a winning smile. Item. Offer her your boiled peanuts as condolence. Looks like somebody needs a hug, as we did last time, so we won't do this time. Hey, Tabitha, give your condolences. Remain silent. What's the, what's the idea? Do we hit on our cousin? I mean, this is the South, after all. It sounds like a Jeopardy theme. Ooh. Hot option it is, Cobalt. We'll hit on our cousin. You've never met someone who's able to resist your ability to make a good first impression. You flash a soft smile and give your condolences. Tabitha, it's so nice to finally meet you. I'm so sorry to hear about your mother. I, uh, thanks? For a brief moment, Tabitha is put at ease before she quickly straightens up her annoyance returns to her face. Might not have been much, but you can confidently notch up another victory courtesy of the winning Fantastic World smile trademark. And I have to start using that. Come on, let's go. I don't want to spend any more down here than I have to. Well, that was brief. Cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clamoring into the dusty relic. It doesn't take much driving for the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Tip dialogue options labeled explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. All right, so how are you holding up? I guess we're both members of the dead mom, so the funeral, I can't believe we never actually met before, remains silent. How many do you want to tackle? I kind of wish you could expand this menu a bit. Fortunately, you can't. Alright, so. This is the only one we haven't actually did before, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be black. Uh, it's going to, you know, 
Backfire horribly. Holding up, all right. How are you holding up? Fine. You know you can talk to me, right? I lost my mom, too. Okay, but if it ever changes, phew, good to hear. I'll get, we will get back to it once we finish this particular branch. I can't believe. I am tempted to say few, good to hear. Phew, good to hear. For a second I was worried I have to talk about feelings and that stuff is hard. Yeah, let's try to talk as little as possible while you're here. Alright, so, I can't believe we've never actually met before this. Yep, you have your mom to thank for that, or had, I guess. That was unnecessary. Is there bad blood between us? I'd wish I'd known about you. Hey, yeah, Dead Mom's Club. Again, with the latency, I'm going to have to wait on this and see if you guys want to hear it. Which one do you want to hear, I mean? I just realized I hadn't brought my coffee down here. Alright, so I should slowly degrade mentally as this episode continues. So, hey, well, it, it feeds directly into the Lovecraftian chaos. Um, Lovecraftian degradation of sanity as the story continues. Alright, so... Do, do, do. Now, I don't remember what I actually said last time. I'd wish I'd known about you. Aha, yeah, Dead Mom's Club remains silent. I'm here with the bad blood one. Is there... I'm sorry, but is there bad blood between us? All I know is my mom left and she was mad at the side of the family, but I don't know much besides that. She doesn't stare straight ahead her expression icy. Uh... So, either of these options or shall we remain silent for the rest of the run? The connection's got slightly better, so hopefully the latency's gone down. <laughs> oh, well, virtual coffee unfortunately doesn't help. All right, so the funeral. So the funeral, it's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. Jeez, it's almost a whole week. Need help planning? Have you worked out all the details yet? I'm getting the impression our character is coming off a little more annoying than they did last time. So are we going to go with the silence, or are we going to complain that we're going to be here all week? Hmm. Help planning. If you need help planning? If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. Just needed the coffin and somebody to dig a hole. Alright, do we want to actually breach the dead bombs club or just stay quiet? Hang on one second. I might be able to make this a little better. That's the thing. 500. All right, so going to have to switch off for one second, and then I'll be right back. See if I can make Okay, so we're back. So that's my attempt to try to lower the bit rate a bit to see if we can actually get this coming out faster. Let me know if the latency improves a little. Silent. All right. knows if they stay dead. That's why you dig them deep, so they get, so they never actually get out. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as a car eases up the steep mountain road. Ah, home sweet home. And there it is, the Scarlet Estate. Although it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to, someone used to cramped apartments in gray cities. Your mother told you this place many times, told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you, a jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel it's something you should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. 
As soon as you enter, you're hit with a dust of bla uh, blast of dusty air. Everything in the room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear the doors creak on their hinges and aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to your family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen, and uh, hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. Cool, thanks. So you live here. It's beautiful. Lie, it's beautiful. Uh, the place is falling apart. I thought you are all loaded. Can't you afford to fix this dump? Remain silent. Ooh, can you better... Mm-hmm. 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 Hmm. Got it. It's a lie. <laughs> All right, fine. Very much so. Serious unfortunate events does seem to be appropriate here. I think she is going to try to kill us. It's beautiful. Uh, it is. The estate was the prized jewel of this region for a long time. It's quite a magnificent piece of architecture, even now. Oh, this is very Lovecraftian. Lovecraft was in goddamn love with old architecture. Seriously, he has he's written over 5,000 um, letters during his lifetime that we can recover, and architecture is like a thing in about a third of them. Shall we begin our tour? Follow me. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip. Some explore options prevent you from taking others. Choose wisely. All right. Someone cleans this place. This place is nasty. It's nice. A lie. It's perfect. Awesome. I love PGJ. Is there somewhere in town to buy food? What if I want ice cream? All right. What's next? All right. So a lot of choices here, and the interface is giving us a little trouble, apparently. So, do we complain about Janie's cleaning? Do we just complain the place is nasty? Do we do the whole lie? It's perfect again. Or what? Because I will do the lie thing if there's no reply. Because we're apparently going on with our character being a little nuts. And hot, apparently. Perfect. Alright, you got it. This is so nice and bing. It is. All right, do we want to say we love PB&J? Do we want to say we're buying town? What if we want ice cream? And all right, what's next? Hmm. This is going to be the most exciting episode to, uh, to uh, play back. I'm going to have to edit out that break, too. But... I do like the fact that we do seem to be going off into these, um, I gotta say it, airhead um, route here. Alright, so. No replies. We've already done the buy food and the um, that. I'm gonna say, what if I want ice cream? Because we're kind of nuts. What if I want ice cream? Then you buy your stuff. General store, if you touch my stash, I will know and there will be consequences. General store, how very folksy. General store, how folksy. It is. Is it? It's a store that fulfills your general stopping needs. General store just describes what it is. All right, I guess we're on to what's next. All right, what's next on the tour? Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sleeping on the, sitting on the countertop. Do we approach the cat? <laughs> Yes, but if the Eldritch Horrors 
it's turn your stomach and you have food, it gets worse, really. Honestly, you probably should just be hydrated well and have really good running gear for feet or for your feet. All right, so approach the cat. That your cat, leave the cat be. Do we approach the cat again? All right, approach the cat. You got it. Don't try to pet Fro Fro. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Okay, everyone. Ni mi pase pas. All right. Do we pet her? Sorry, I don't speak French. Do I, okay, but can I pet you? Do I even bother talking to cats? Leave her alone. As the cat is going to be obviously an issue. Well, that white cat isn't really. So, yeah, it looks like the stream health when I set down the bitrate did go up a bit. I'm not getting any lower than four and a half kilobytes per second. Is that better on your side? <laughs> the internet is for cat worship, Jack, okay? <laughs> Oh, gods. All right. So, okay. Can I pet? But can I pet you? Now, we should ask for permission. Okay, but can I pet you? Ugh. Another filthy American sticking their nose where it doesn't belong. That's the wrong accent. I haven't done a bad French one. No, you may not pet me. I would sooner smear myself with sewage than be touched by your filthy ape hands. Oh, yeah. This is appropriate for cats. Ugh. Stop wait. Ugh. Stop wasting my time. Let's finish the tour. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights, it'll be easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time, you feel lucky not to have fallen through the floors. Yes, bathroom, not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must, if you must. It is a nasty, wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sits untouched in the corner of the room, and mystery stains paint the floors. Hmm. Hmm. Friends, well, <laughs> we are here. <laughs> and the worst bathroom in the world. Okay, now I've seen worse than this. Okay, explore. Who exactly uses this bathroom? Wait, are you sure the toilet works? Explore, this is worth. Are we going with the lie, I like this bathroom? Because that would be continuing the streak that we're all just kind of going through. Oh, sorry about the flickering light there. I'm going to have to put a warning in front of this one. All right. Hmm. hmm. I'm going with the lie since it does, like I said, it is kind of being continuing. <laughs> Confirm operational status. All right. Are you sure this, are you sure this toilet works? Uh, yes, why wouldn't it? The water bill gets paid, therefore the toilet works. Now do your business so we can move on. But it's so crusty, Sayoke okay, remains silent. So be it, then. Alright. You sigh in resignation. Okay. That's the spirit. Who exactly uses this? This is the worst bathroom I've ever seen, or I like this bathroom. Never mind, I don't need to go. We can't have to hold it. After all, the... We are playing a male character. We're in the woods. Probably we're okay. <clears throat> gonna have to move on. I'm going to go with I like this bathroom simply because we can stop listening to the flies. What a nice bathroom. Glad you like it. So, do we ask who uses it, do we use it, or do we just decide to hold it till we get to town? Not exactly the character choice I was thinking we'd be concentrating on this episode. 
I mean, I will come back with Bleach and a Flamethrower. It comes right down to it. All right. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, you choose gender. Cramp, I want to dig us up. Yep, there's a colony of cockroaches in there. Bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. You're good to actually use the facilities. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, oh, great. The buffering's uh, started up again. Fortunately, looks like the connection. I can't really reset the connection while I'm broadcasting. Okay, so... Also, by the way, the icon for the um, episode on my bar is, in fact, a calico cat. So, yeah, whoever did this is, of course, a cat person. All right, so let's just do our business. Like I said, half we're probably okay. We get to stand. A toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must, and we join your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom, last stop on tour. Follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. This room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week in sleeping in this room might give you permanent lung damage. This is where you'll be staying. Linens are fresh. I had Jenny wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful. Closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hold your clothes in it, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. Alright, the room is amazing. What a dump. Dusty. This room is nice. Again, if I don't hear from you in the next 30 seconds or so, that's going to be the choice. Because apparently that's kind of who we are. And who used to sleep here? Oh. I guess she should get settled and remain silent. <laughs> Bit drafty. Ambience is amazing. Just, you know, the bathroom was pretty bad. Okay, we're going amazing. This room is amazing. This is great. Way nicer than what I'm used to. I can't say I'm surprised. Each and, each, each and every piece of this furniture in the room is a genuine antique. Handed down through families for generations. Ghost? I think singular? It's not a Kia bedroom or whatever nonsense you're used to in the city. Who used to sleep here? Ah, I think that's what you mean, Jack. Who used to sleep here? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. And now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. Now, I guess, unfortunately, couldn't lie because once I said it was amazing, it locks out that one. Remember, if I do start with an explorer, it starts a thread that, uh, that denies other options. Right, I guess I'll get to start. I guess I'll start to get st settled. Uh, tongue twister. Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. All right. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip. Some dialogue options open additional conversational paths, some right away and others down the line. Where are you going? When I'm supposed to do you're gone? Are you sure you can't take the day off? Did I do something wrong? Why are you being a jerk to me? Are you sure you're okay? I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. All right. So, what do you want to interrogate our cousin about? It is almost a Jeopardy theme. Hmm. Okay, so if we're going to open up something... Uh, I'll ask her about taking the day off. We didn't do that last time. Are you sure you can't take the day off? It's a special occasion. Your cousin's in town. No, some of the responsibilities... You can't think about it. Isn't family the greatest responsibility to Oh, it's true. Could say how much longer. Okay. 
I'm going to go with chill with your cuz, because unfortunately we've gone a bit further. Are you sure you want to stay just a little bit long and chill with your last remaining cuz? Especially considering the reason I'm here, it might make you feel better. Oh yes, of course, because neglecting my responsibility to chill with my cuz would definitely make me less stressed. Alright, so... Where are you going? We have solid option opened. Wait, where are you going? To work. Someone's to pay the bills around here. What kind of work? What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every scarlet who came before me. Except you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. Uh, sad, boring girl boss? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, gross, sad, boring, good for you. Can I watch? I didn't know we owned a coal mine. No, we don't own a coal mine. She owns a coal mine. I... Like I said before, this obviously our mother ran away from some particularly horrible stuff, especially if this is her idea of is normal. I mean, yeah, it's apparently our idea of normal, so it must run in the family. So let's see. I'm going to do it. I'll default to a can I come watch if I'm not here in the next few seconds to latency. Hmm. Can I come watch? What? No, the mind is dangerous. I can't babysit you and do my job. Uh, and I will go with girl boss. Damn, I can't believe you're only in your 20s and already running a coal mine. Talk about girl boss. Don't patronize me. Watching Jits more data on what your driver is saying, yeah. But you know you have nothing to your name, Fantastic Worlds. Any other inane questions before I leave? What is this to do? Did I do something wrong? Why are you being a jerk? Are you sure you're okay? Hmm. Curious, I'm going to break out the uh, chocolate cover. No, I don't have any more of those, unfortunately. I used to have a collection of chocolate covered uh, coffee beans, I do, as a backup for this sort of thing. Dig deeper and feel the sea and stumbling giants under this. <laughs> you sure you're okay? You seem kind of upset. I'm fine, I just need to get back to work. I know what I was going to do. I was basically going to attack the bathroom with bleach while she was gone, but I probably have to go and buy bleach. She probably doesn't have any cleaning supplies around here. All right. I'll ask what I'm supposed to do while you're gone. What I'm supposed to do when you're gone? There's a very demanding job as you can get to right now that doesn't involve figuring out activities for you to occupy your time with. I'm not your babysitter, why don't you, I don't know, go walk around in town or something until you get tired. There are historic buildings to look at. I'm sure you have a great time. Can you take me into town? Do you think I can take me into town before you leave? No, it's just down the hill. You can walk there yourself. All right, so we... Should we hang out when we get back? This time around, I'm just going to let Tabitha leave. You decide to let Tabitha leave for work. Are we set then? I'll see you tonight. Sure. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and this sprawling, decrepit estate. Okay, PB&J, so the one thing we didn't do last time, by the way, was we didn't settle into our room, which is probably what I'm going to try to do now. Now that your cousin is gone, the aches and pains of the journey sink into your bones. They stumble back upstairs to your room, suitcase in tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. All right. You stand at the entrance to your room. Take a nap, put your spare clothes in the dresser, check the closet, look out the window. Examine the painting. We're definitely doing that. This must be an old relative of yours. Very old, judging by the dates on the inscription. You've never heard of her, but you just barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago, so that's not a surprise. Maybe you can ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she actually is in the mood for conversation. Yep, explore everything. All right, key it out. Look out the window. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you own this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. All we have to do is kill her. We kill Tabitha, we're the lonely blood relative left alive, and boom, we got an estate. All right, granted, we'll have to sell it to somebody who wants to do it for condos and then buy a regular place somewhere else in town with, the, with money to spare, but, you know, it's a thought. You go out and pull weeds, chop trees, carve topiaries, and do whatever you need to do to return to its former glory. Once it was all done, you'd sit by your fountain, which of course have a little goldfish in it. Uh, by the way, don't bother with goldfish or koi, the uh, herons will eat them. And drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. God, you've gone native. Yeah, you definitely do that, just not right now. Alright, so check the closet. 
You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser. Ooh, creepy doll. Instead of the closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up here. Pick up... Yes. We're going to take the cursed doll. Of course you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick it up to examine it more closely. Its foot reads Property of Alexandria. No need to carry this around with you. I don't know. I don't know. Did that winning smile that might cause her to might cause our cousin to tap, to pause before she tries to stab us, and then we can get the uh, drop on her. Close the closet behind you. All right, spare clothes in the dresser. You drag your suitcase over the dresser and open the bottom drawer. A opossum lurks within. It is quiet but angry. Ha! First assassination attempt. Afraid. I friend. I know hurt. Oh, what's your name, little guy? What are you doing in my drawers? Can you move, please? I'm closing there. Can you tell me about the human who lives in here? Offer him your boiled peanuts. All right, this is it. This is where the boiled peanuts must come in. All right, so I'm gonna try this and we're gonna see what happens. Well, you're still dripping by boiled peanuts. Afraid, death comes for Dustin. You close the drawer, you might as well leave Dustin be. You open the drop drawer, it's empty. As good a place as you'll find your clothing. Wait, those peanuts were poisoned. Those peanuts were poisoned from this dude that he gave us to on the bus. Oh god, the first time we ran around those, we kept trying to give them to people. That would have been awkward. Alright. <laughs> Look, if we can kill Tabitha earlier, we probably will. Apparently they... I'm sorry, we killed him by accident. Dustin is dead now. Might not have been poisoned. I don't know. Do peanuts kill? I don't know. Possums can't be killed by peanuts. God damn it. They eat everything. Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you're better off keeping your clothes in your nice clean bag, but there's no going back now. All right. We're going to take a nap. We've earned it. Yes. Yes. We have killed Dustin. But better Dustin than us. Or Gretchen. Remember, Gretchen was the one we offered to it before. We Good thing we didn't. Yeah. So that guy just wandered around and tried to kill a random stranger with peanuts. So, yeah, never eat anything that isn't sealed. Seriously. You're at a party, don't take a drink. From somebody you don't know. Take it right from the bartender and hope the bartender's not into it. <sighs> so Jack said the opinion we're just going to massacre the entire town. You immediately collapse onto the bed. You're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. Oh, you thought you thought. You cough as a small cloud of dust rises from the mattress. Those sheets might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. You try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in strange places. You can feel the springs pressing through the fabric. You might be tired, but you're far from tired enough to get more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. We're sleeping on the floor. Uh, it might be Okay, so that's enough. It doesn't seem like there's anything else to do right now. Okay, do you want... Alright, we'll do the Forbidden Wings of the Estate. Throughout the gone, there's no one stopping you from going to the Forbidden Wings of the Estate, except, of course, they're locked. You immediately try the nearest door, and they'll be impeded by locks and chains. And so we've done the PB&J before. And we looked out onto the garden, thought it was cool, talked to the cat who told us we were an asshole, and made a PB&J. But, since we all need to know there's going to be a diner in town, I'm thinking we should probably just run into town. With your cousin gone, there's nothing you can do real up here. You drop your bags off. Wait, we already dropped our bags off. Ugh. Text. If you had known you'd wind up having to walk away to the tech town, you'd probably just ask the help to leave you at the bus stop, especially how happy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of that tension, though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. What I want to know, by the way, is how the peanuts managed to disintegrate Dustin's body. Continue down the path. It's really pretty out here. Finally, you made it back to town. The hauler, as the guy in the bus called it, has seen probably better days. It still has the feeling of an ideal country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up, the windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're pee peeing, peering into a grave. The bathroom apparently is traumatic. Oh, hi, Gretchen. Here we go again. Gretchen, come back. Quick bothering strangers. Ah, well, I do declare, who is this gorgeous stranger? Oh, we're hot, right? Oh, I haven't seen you around here before. Hot. The young woman is noticeably flustered by your appearance. It's a phenomenon you, call you as a hot are all too familiar with. Well, this is going to change the dynamic entirely. Sorry about Gretchen. She can be slippery, very slippery when she wants to be. Hope she didn't scare you. 
Talk to animals. Oh, we're not offering the boiled peanuts to anyone ever again. You know, you pet the dog, a pug so cute. Tell me about this wonderful country. I don't do old dogs. Introduce yourself. Remain silent. All right, so boiled peanuts are out. Period. We've already... Uh, we've already... Barry and the possum sacrificed themselves for dear Gretchen here. That, oof. Think about it. The first time we did this and I offered them to Gretchen, it was stopped by, um, oh, I don't have her name yet. Stopped by her, but that's a smart thing to do in the real world because still poison dogs too, even if it is accidental. Right, so, yeah. I've got to say this, Jack, you were right. We should have just butchered the guy on the bus. All right, so... Nice to meet you, Gretchen, is what we got last time, but you guys want me to uh, use this if possible. It's nice to meet you, Gretchen. I'm Fantastic Worlds. Oh, oh my, I can't remember the last time I met a newcomer who was so wonderfully polite. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Fra Fantastic Worlds. Ha, that's a funny way to introduce yourself. I'm Stella. It's not often I see a strange face in the hall, or every now and then there's a new crop of coal folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. And you aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet Funeral? Uh, no boiled peanuts. Yep, maybe. No, not your business. I'm just going to say yep. That's what I was thinking. Can they be allergic to peanuts? But the, the other thing is, the possums are scavengers. They, um... They designed to eat just about everything. And peanuts are native, or were introduced a long time ago, to the south. So odds are the possums were allergic to peanuts to that level. There probably would have been some issues with the population. Wow, I didn't think there was anybody else coming. Are you staying with Tabby? How's she holding up? Oh, you're right. Just another mutant. The uh, possum's fake death. So he wasn't poisoned him. He just dropped... He just played dead. I've forgotten all about that. It's been an aeon since I've been in the South. It was... Yeah, the, the year started with 19 last time I was in the South. If I mentioning your cousin, Gretchen's mother is under her breath. One of these days, I'll get that Tabitha to pet me. I haven't seen her since Pearly Ann passed, or a while before that, now that I think about it. I'm sorry, did you say Tabby? Yeah, I'm gonna go with this option. Looks like they might know each other. I'm sorry, did I hear you right? I can't remember Tabitha ever going by something so bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while. I hope she's okay. She seems alright. I'm worried about her, too. Is she always so... I don't know how she's doing, and I don't care. Why do you care? Alright, I'm gonna open this one up. We're actually getting some data about Tabitha that we missed the first time. Apparently she's changed over the last few years. It must be our family curse causing her to uh, become more and or less and less human. I mean, I mean, kind of even odds that she's a cultist or she's a mass serial killer. Hmm. I mean, if you were running a cult of a... a um, how do I put this? A coal mine would be a great place to have your pentacle. Who's going to come down and see it? I'm going to say I'm worried about her, too. Three, two, one, thirty seconds. There we go. I'm worried about her, too. Oh, she's always been a little rough around the edges, but I figured she'd probably be having a rough go with things. She and her mom are really close. To think she's been up in an old mansion all by herself. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. How long have you known her? Are you two friends? She's not worth your time. In silent. Probably gonna go with how long you've known her. I'm trying to get as much data as I can about it. How long have you known her? Oh, quite a long time. The town's really small, so everybody knows everybody else as far back as they remember. Tabby and I got a little close when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer Night Dreams. I was Puck, and she was Mustard Seed. Hugs are like that. Just, I had this kind of shocked wonder to look at the world. Hmm, Puck. Well, Puck is supposed to be an androgynous figure. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. Did you two date? Then she graduated and that was that. I haven't seen that girl or a horrible little cat since I was middle-aged. Oh, before it slips my mind, if you're staying at the spooky mansion, you'll have met Fru-Fru. How does that monster fare? Ugh, oh, Tabitha's cat, unfortunately we've met. I will pet her as the last thing I do. It sounds like you and Fru-Fru have a history. Ignore Gretchen unless Stella discover your quirk. I don't really mind about the quirk. I'm gonna go with you and Fru-Fru have a history. Remember, we're interrogating. Sounds like you and Fru-Fru have a history. 
Wait, what? Are, are you messing with me? You can't actually talk to my dog, right? Alright. <laughs> Do we come clean about being able to talk to animals to Stella? Alright, this is an important one, so I am gonna let it go for a little bit here. Because it's probably, if she does take us seriously about this talking to animals thing, and remember, she is into cryptids and such, this is probably much this might tar trigger a whole different chain of uh, interaction with her. At least the background music is terrible. I mean, I'm thinking it's supposed to be raining, but it's just the leaves turning. I mean, the blowing leaves are probably turning here. Hmm, okay. So last time we went with a joke. So if I don't hear from you in the next couple of seconds, I am going to be get, admitting that we have a dark and terrible secret that we talk to animals. Alas, you have discovered my dark silent mystery. Ah, unfortunately, Jack, the latency is working against us here. I can talk to animals and animals can talk to me. Your dog sounds like a southern bell when she talks. Ha ha, yeah, of course you're joking. Ah. You and Stella maintain silent, awkward eye contact. Well, next time, next time you see that devil cease into my regard, do let her know that not only that, why I still draw breath, that I very much plan to outlive her. Oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to dinner for coffee. You've got amazing biscuits. My treat. Follow her. We haven't eaten. Okay, this again. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with a definitely comforting din of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. Hey everyone, I'm Fantastic Worlds. Okay, we have to use the hot option here. Hey everyone, I'm Fantastic Worlds. Just in time for a funeral. Nice to meet you all. The woman behind the counter beams back at you. Hey, got one. Hello there, and welcome to the holler. You just let us know if you need anything, okay? You nod politely, giving a small wave of you and Stella slide in the nearest booth. Okay, I'm liking the hot option better than the mystic option. Okay, that is the sound of walk of sitting into a uh, <laughs> those old style booths. God, looks like you'll be the talk of the town for a while. It's not often folks around here meet many strangers, and you with who you're related to, will folks like to gossip? You know. Oh yeah. Hey Stella, went ahead and fixed you a cup of coffee. They gracefully place a special brewed cup of coffee in front of Stella. Ah oh, shucks, thanks Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. For me? For me? Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Tipped, you can hit the H button on your keyboard to hide the text box anytime. So yeah, if you want to actually see Gretchen uh, eating the... You're right, the Jack, the eyes or something. She may turn out to be the monster all along. Anything for you, darling? Days by. Uh, offer no. i boiled peanuts. Uh, how much is the coffee? Order coffee, biscuit, and a coffee. Could I have a biscuit and a coffee, please? I heard they were really good. Best in tent in the county. Every pours a fragrant... Yeah, pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pour your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I'm sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Ah, there. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think of any, any cool events going on this week. Uh, there's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyways. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. Now we'll definitely hit the party. And Oh, hot perk party, we should be fine. And where's the weekly Sunday potluck? That should be right. Yeah, yeah. Dog is... Dog's still staring at us! <laughs> is the potluck like a church thing cool? No, that's really striking me funny. Remain silent. I'm gonna go with cool if I don't hear anything, and I might be ending the... This particular episode at that point, because usually I don't like to go over an hour. I'm gonna give a couple more minutes because of the kind of tech issues we've been having here. I'm gonna see if I can get that to work better, because it might be the... Hello, Kira. Fortunately, you just hit us when I was about to finish, unfortunately. Ugh, timing. But yeah, the idea being is that we're trying to... Yes, we've had to start over again, Kira, but we picked the hot perk instead of the um, mystic perk, and it seems to be working out for us, so we're kind of a bit of an airhead according to our, to our choices so far. 
which is kind of interesting. And we've decided that the dog is probably an eldritch abomination without those eyes. Yes, I finally figured, they finally taught me how to get rid of the text box if I wanted to. I'm just going to go with cool. Sounds neat. Maybe I'll check out some of those things. Anyways, one of the biggest events I can think of is for the day-to-day, -day, any idea you want to kill time for the rest of the week. All right, so. Quick save. Hopefully this time it will stick, because unfortunately the reason we did this is the first one did not stick. So yeah, Monday, we're done day by day, and boom. Okay, so, and quick back. We have history? What's that do? Huh. Okay, so everything we've done has been recorded, if I ever wanted to go back and check it out. New, okay, return. Go. <sighs> so, I did hope you enjoy this. I'm sorry about the latency issues, but unfortunately, being, being a holiday weekend, it might have been the best time to try to get this done. Oh, well then. I'm sorry about that, Kira. We're supposed to be starting at 2. Uh Well, one of the things about that, if you check on my um, page, since I'll, I do these in advance, it'll tell you how many hours there is until the uh, episode starts. Because what happens is it basically I say I want to do a live episode at this point. It goes, sets a reminder on people's subscription feeds if they've subscribed to me or if it's, of course, it's going to be on my page. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, the thing is, is that we changed the plot a little here, like I've said. And now we're kind of zipping into a bit of an airhead uh, path uh, instead of one that is mystic, because the mystic didn't really give me much. Anyways, so this is Fantastic World, saying for all from Lovecraft Country. I hope you enjoyed this particular run, and, you know, let me know in the comments if you're watching this after the fact, because I'll be, I have recorded the entire thing. I'll probably run it as an episode for the series itself, because... With the vote, we have another one of the episode, episode two, for will be next month. And then I'm betting that for my supporters will also vote for episode three. Once we hit three episodes, it gets its own channel. I mean, its own playlist. Its own channel. Its own playlist. So, yeah. Anyways, if you like it, like, share, subscribe. If you really like it, down below are links to the government payment platform. Become a supporter. Unlock additional material. Vote on additional material for, uh, like, this episode here. And, of course, we hit the stretch goal of the third stretch goal for supporters. We will unlock a third episode per month. Anyways, so I will see you next time.